Hi, welcome to Monterey's Cooking. I'm John Pisto. Folks, today we're in Pebble Beach, California, which is part of the Monterey Peninsula. I'm standing in a place called the Lone Cypress Tree, and behind me you can see this beautiful scenery. I mean, you probably recognize some of the scenery because so many commercials, automobiles, have been filmed here. Uh, also, the tree we're looking at is over 250 years old. I mean, all by itself out there. Now, if you look close in the ocean, you see sea otters, seals, and occasionally you even see a whale as they make their migration. And those are gray whales. Pebble Beach has also been home to many, many movies, something like 75 different movies, including Play Misty for me, Clint Eastwood's directorial uh, debut. Well, I thought today we're going to do some oysters, being that we're close by the ocean and I have the salt spray and I, and I feel like some cold wine and some oysters on the half shell and then I'm going to show you how to make a very old California dish called Hangtown Fry. Okay, let's go down the wharf and get some oysters. Well, I'm down on Commercial Wharf. I'm going to see my old buddy Buster Carvello. He's manager of Consolidated Factor. He's got my oysters for me. There he is. Hey, John. Bastian, how are you? How are you? John? I see you, buddy. I'm fine. Now, these are nice and fresh, right? They're real fresh. Are They're you so sure? Fresh. Okay. I'm going to eat one. Okay, now that's, that's fresh, folks. That's fresh. Okay, I prefer mine cooked, this variety. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to take these home. We're going to make Hangtown Fry. Okay. Swallow that before you gag. Bon que schivo. E bono. Be okay. very classic dish called Hangtown Fry. But before I start, let me introduce you to a friend, Steve from Lockwood. Hey John, how are Hi, you? how are you? Nice to see you that's, again. That's uh, Lockwood Vineyards and Winery. Mm -hmm. And Steve is uh, with us today to talk about some of his wines and we're gonna match up this wine with this dish. Now, what I'm gonna be cooking, let me tell you a little bit about Hangtown Fry. You know the story about it? Nope. Some miner during the gold rush days, hit it rich, went to a restaurant. He says, I want the best of everything you got. Well, in those days, eggs were expensive, bacon was available, and oysters were around. Mm -hmm. So he put them all together, and he came up with an omelet with oysters and bacon, and it's called Hangtown Fry. So we're going to show you how to make Hangtown Fry. You ever hear of it? Have nope. you heard of Hangtown Fry? Never. Never. Nope. Okay. Well, first of all, we're going to need is some eggs. Okay. Right, you want to go ahead and do those in the corner. Give me all of them. And I've got a poaching liquid and I got bacon. We'll start cooking that right now. And here are the oysters. Nice, beautiful Pacific oysters. Aren't they beautiful? Man, I could eat a couple dozen of these right now, folks. Now, I'm going to put them in here and let them drain. We want to get. No, they don't have. They don't have to drain. I'm going to poach these off first. All right. I figure. Heck, I'm good for about a couple dozen of these. How about you, Steve? Yeah, yeah. Huh? Oh, you like oysters? I love oysters. Well, in that case, I'll put in an extra handful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen oysters in a bucket before. Boy, yep. These have been. These are pre-shucked. <laughs> That's nice. That's saves your hands. Sure does. Okay. Then, see what I'm going to do with these is poach them very lightly. Let me get some stuff out of the way here. Now, you don't want to overcook oysters. 
because if you do, they're not real good. You're supposed to pull them just when they start to curl around the edges. Okay. Do they get chewy like calamari no, does? No, these, these won't get chewy at all. So we'll pull them. We want that real close here. Okay, now I just made a little, uh, a little court bouillon with a little wine, some water, salt, pepper, some parsley, some lemon. We use some uh, dry white uh, mm -hmm. sauvignon salmon blanc, blanc, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see how this is starting to curl? See that, how they curl here? That's interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very, very, see that's close. We don't want to overcook them, then they get tough. See? And, and some salt in the water too, folks. Yeah, you want the oysters to still be a little bit on the raw side. Because you know, you can eat these raw, of course. Okay, mmm, boy, that liquor is gonna be good, you know that. Do I get kicked out of the kitchen yes. for shells? Careful with the shells. <laughs> okay, so Steve, but you, now, you, have you done anything else besides being a winemaker? I mean, that's your life's work, isn't it? Well, years ago, I had another career. Which was? Mechanical engineer. Ah. But that was a long time ago. Uh-huh. So, but, uh, so I've what, been why, making wine for 17 years now. Why'd you get into wine? Uh, my grandfather, actually. Oh, really? <coughs> he spent a lot of time on his ranch in San Jose before uh -huh. it was all paved over. What and, kind of ranch do you have? Uh, walnuts and prunes and apricots. Were they the little prunes? Uh, they, they, the they were the, they, they dried? The drying prunes, right. Oh, boy. Yeah. So, uh, so he got me turned on to wine, actually, uh, when I was 16 years old. Have some videos of that. And really? Went to uh, engineering school and decided that sitting behind a desk wasn't going to be my lifelong calling. So wow. I changed careers. That's fantastic. Went back to school and got a degree in winemaking and have loved it. That's actually how I got to Monterey. Is that right? It was uh, through, the, through an opening back in 1986. I'll be darned. <clears throat> well, it's a great career. I wouldn't, is it, to, is it, wouldn't I have mean, fun. Food and wine, I mean, it's, I wouldn't do anything else. It's got to be the best. I mean, the best of both worlds. I mean, geez, we get to travel. We get to taste all these incredible wines and food and meet the nicest people in the world. I always tell people that you never meet anybody bad in the wine or food business ever. That, that, that's the truth, isn't it? Okay, now we're gonna do this. You got you got to use a Teflon pan. And here's a fork. You can start whipping that up for me. All right. And don't use a whip. Use a fork. Because okay. I don't want air into it. Now, if we were going to make these fluffy omelets, then we would go with uh, uh, with the whip. Okay. Okay. So whip yeah. that. So beat that pretty good. I'm going to get this nice and. Okay. I'm going to start this off. Now use a Teflon pan. Now you're going to say this is a lot of butter, right? It's not a lot of butter. Because you figure eight, nine people are going to eat this, cut this in half and quarter. Besides, it have to have butter in here. Now, I'm going to put just a little bit of olive oil to bring up the smoking, the temperature. All right. That's going good. Turn these. That about, so, that about right or more? Uh, keep going, Mos Steve. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Okay, so Steve, let's talk about Lockwood a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, well, you folks have been around for for quite a while, actually. A little, little over ten years. Yeah. And um, how long have you you've been growing grapes for a longer period than that, though? Correct. We, we planted the vineyard in 1981 and 82, uh -huh. and then the winery was started in 1989 uh -huh. as kind of an experimental facility. Uh huh. Really, never was supposed to be a large production facility, but it. Uh, we just finished our last expansion, our recent, most recent expansion, in the end of 1999, which brought us up to a quarter of a million case capacity. Uh huh. So we're growing quite a bit in 10 years. Wow. Well, I must say, you know, your wines are very, very good. I, well, you know, even the county more, more than very good. The I mean, county. Excellent, well, thank you. The, the county, I think, is really one of the unsung heroes in the wine industry. Well, really, that's changing now, though. Isn't slowly, it? and which is great, um, but. You know, we have more acres than Napa or Sonoma individually. Napa's got about 40,000 acres, and we're on the edge of 50,000 acres. Holy, 50,000 acres, my so, gosh. Um, and you'd be surprised how many products that you see from other counties that are that contain Napa or uh, Monterey County fruit. Yep, that's, well, it's, you know, it's, I know there's a big giant push here 
to sell Monterey County wines mm -hmm. and, and to let people know that our wines in this area are as good as any grown in the United States or in the world, in fact. A lot of people are saying that, that Monterey Chardonnay may be the premier Chardonnay, at least in the United States, if not maybe the world eventually. My gosh. So, wow. And that wasn't yeah. from an internal source. That was from some wine writers. That's amazing. That's, yeah. that's nice to hear that, you know. We're getting a nice... Uh, uh, we're discovering things that in Europe that they've had, they've known for years. I mean, you go to certain parts of Europe, that's, they grow a certain type of grape there, mm -hmm. and I mean, they've experimented with. They know that's the only grape to grow. That grows and well. Here, there. I mean, we had to, we had a learning thing. Here. We had a learning curve, but mm -hmm. but Monterey County is a pretty big area, and, and it's very diverse. The the topography and the climate change dramatically as you move throughout the Cano Valley and the Salinas Valley. So you, you have really cold spots and you have really warm spots, mm -hmm. so you can move grape varieties around, but you're correct. In the beginning, we had Cabernet in cold spots and we paid the price, and mm -hmm. we had Chardonnay in too hot an area, and those weren't as interesting, so yeah, things like, have moved around. Yeah, th things are starting to <coughs> settle in, so to speak, now. Uh, that was easy, easy. Got, got it close? Yeah, that's pretty good. More? Make sure it's all integrated. When we come back, we'll keep... We'll be stirring the eggs. <laughs> okay, see the bacon? I don't like it real crispy either. You know, we were talking about making it crispy or not. Let's get that out of the way. Let that dry. Okay, we got the oil going. We got the eggs. Let's make sure we have everything together. Should we leave these whole or should we think we should cut these? Hmm. I think they're okay. Maybe it's quite a mouthful, huh? But I think it'll look better. It's okay, we'll leave it whole. Okay, get the heat going. Get yourself a spatula. The kind that doesn't melt when you use it. <laughs> Uh, you have some specials over there. I got in trouble Half for gone. It. Yep. You know where that is, it's just inside you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's cut this up. Got in trouble for that just the other day. Well, they got new ones now. I've been telling as many people as I can about them. And they've got these high temperature, and they've got red handle. Okay. And I've been using this one for, I don't know, two months. Yeah, brand new. Doesn't, doesn't melt. Of course, uh, nothing like a good spatula once in a while. <laughs> Okay, here we Hello, go. friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got the heat going. Let's see how big this is. This is 18 eggs. We're going to go... We're going to go about 13, 14 eggs. 15 eggs. Okay, turn up the heat. Now let's add a little salt in there. And a little pepper. Mario, you can chop that parsley for me, please. Right now, as this starts to cook, Steve, you like to make omelets? Yes. Mm -hmm. Me too. Boy. And just start moving. Make sure you put enough oil in there. You know, you can always dab that oil out after, but it's it's important that you uh, you have enough oil. Otherwise, it'll start once it starts sticking on you, forget about it. Okay, we got this is ready. Good bacon. You want to taste? Sure. Okay, we better start thinking about wine. Which right. one should we have with yes. this? Oh, um, good question. Oysters and Sauvignon Blanc. Oysters, so, and I'm going to put some chopped onions in there, too. And we marinated them in the Sauvignon Blanc or mm -hmm. we cooked poached them. them. Uh-huh. Sauvignon Blanc. Try Chardonnay. Uh, Chardonnay. Something red. That's one choice. You think, let's try it. What so, red would you do mm. with this? Well, let's see. That would probably... Even, do the Syrah. It's kind of a softer wine. Try Sounds the Syrah. good to me. Okay. The bacon has a nice flavor. It's not too mm -hmm. smoky. Yeah, that's great. See, what you want to do is start draining this off. You see how I'm working this like this? You see how I'm doing this? Mm -hmm. You know how to do this, right? Actually, I'm, I'm watching here. Because if you said yes, I was going to say, take over, wait up, be right back. <laughs> <laughs> is there, is there, You just keeping it, keeping it. Keep solid moving it. Yeah, keep moving it around. around. But you're not breaking it and mixing it up in chunks. No. 
Okay, it gets to this point. We add the bacon. I mean, wait a minute. Let's get some more of that. Whoa! Nope. And be very careful with this, folks. <laughs> you heard of the traveling omelet. Almost lost it. Okay, we're going to do that. Oh, this is going good. Now I'll lower it just a little bit. Okay. Now we're going to scatter the bacon. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Man, this is looking the, good. I think the really with the bacon. Now, let's drop our, our oysters in there. Push them in there a little bit. Now the heat's got to be low. Now what's the white wine we're going to have? Sauvignon Blanc. And what's the red? Syrah. Ooh. Which I think with the bacon will be perfect. I think so. Okay, look at this. That's great. Oh, it looks pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to have to flip this. <laughs> I'm going to stay back. <laughs> <laughs> now, you held this out for a reason? Uh, yeah, we had too much egg. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got to put a lot of oysters in there, see? Okay. Okay, that's done. Mario? Yes. Parsley? Green onion, please. That looks great. All right. Oh, man. I think we got something here, Stevie. I think we got something beautiful, folks. I'm going to make this every day. Every <laughs> week. Every weekend, I'm going to make this for my wife. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay. Do not attempt to flip this one. Not even on a dare. You know what I would do to finish this off a little bit better? I would put some of my seasoned breadcrumbs that I have Ooh. over here. Right. And we put some over the oysters. Right. Now, you know, that miner could have been Italian, <laughs> or the cook at least. So he used a little garlic. Okay. Okay, now anything else we can put in there? Oh man, is this looking good? It's like a great pizza. Okay, I'm gonna put this, so we're gonna put this in the oven for five minutes. Just let the egg cook. Okay, so this needs five minutes, folks. Oyster omelet, or as they say, Hangtown Fry. Look at that. That's a beauty. Yeah. I mean, I even hate to eat this one. <laughs> well, let's try it out, though. Let's see. You got your fork? Yep. We got the wines. Why don't we take a, take a bite of that? Let me get this over here so we don't fall. Okay. Got to find get a an oyster piece. here. Yeah, get a piece of oyster with... Eggs cooked just right. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Hot. Mm-hmm. Not bad. Definitely. Mm. Without a doubt. Man, what a bread try that this is. Mm. Mm. Isn't that good? Mm -hmm. Try it with the wine. Boy, it brings out the, uh, the barrel the oak flavor. It just jumps up. Does that? Mm -hmm. Very good. Let's try the red. Mmm. <laughs> That's good. Mmm. Those oysters. I, like I love the oysters. From, from uh, Taylor. Up in Seattle. Way to go, Taylor. All right, mm. one more. Good job. I like you. Mm. You know something? I can't believe it. It's not bad. It's rough. Well, folks, we're going to have to pass this around to everybody. Thanks for watching. Steve, thanks for coming. Right, thank you. Real pleasure. Right, thank Remember you. Lockwood Wines, folks. Okay? See you next time.